Bad ninja in the dad. Yo. Yeah. Check, check. One, two, three, four. God damn it. Oh, hey. Bad boy. You know how we crazy. <laughs> This is Birdie, and this is Barney, and this is the Birdie and Barney Rebooted. This is just the Birdie and Barney show. <laughs> yeah, I know you all missed us, uh, that would be uh, March 24th, right? Um, let, let's let's explain what happened, right? Firstly, missed might be a, a stretch, eh? <laughs> it's, it's really technical, really technical, right? Um, or lack thereof on, <laughs> on a certain person's part. Uh, let's just say that our producer and, and goalkeeper, Corey, made a great save. <laughs> VAR overturned it. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are now. All, all cleared up. <laughs> ah, I know good enough to Right, Nothing to add, Barney. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you think Jovin Jones' um, penalty was confuffling... <laughs> <laughs> you should have been in the studio about two weeks ago. Is is was what I say. It was more painful though, <laughs> for sure. What what we missed since our last podcast, um, Barney? What happened in the world since then? Well, a lot of things happened in the world, but the sporting world you're talking about, or <laughs> the world in general, because I have a lot of issues that I want, <laughs> I want to express. We don't have time to go through well, Barney's right. issues today. Um, since last we were here, Trinidad and Tobago had two World Cup qualifying games. Uh, we won the first one 3 0 against Guyana. And we drew on the road to Puerto Rico. Plus, a press officer get but We had a show. Oh, no. That's the show that, that you and. Cor- well, you're saying it's Corey, but it's really you. It is. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, All right. Um, for listeners who are not too Ankara, like that word, Evani. <laughs> With the World Cup qualifying campaign, let me try to, to explain it a little bit more depth than, than um, the, the technical issue. Right? So, in CONCACAF, where we have a three spots plus a half spot, that's a playoff, five nations qualify directly to the final round based on the FIFA ranking. Which replaces the, the hex. Which, which replaces was, the hex um, before. Yeah. Right? Uh, this time it's uh, the final group is eight teams. The five teams that are already there, we have Mexico, United States of America, Jamaica, Costa Rica, and Honduras. The other 30 nations split into six group of five. Or you like Mamad Stebani? Well, it's it good. We're not all, not all 30 playing, <laughs> as we do. <laughs> well, one, one withdrawal. St. Lucia um, didn't make it to the, to the starters. <laughs> they didn't make it, but they didn't want to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, 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 they pull out early. No, no. <laughs> Weez, boy, this x rated now. <laughs> we are already talking about the Warriors' lack penetration in the last game, St. Lucia. Pull out early anyway. It's, it's not that kind of show. All right? So, in any case, uh, these, well, 29 nations have to play two rounds of qualifiers with three teams going forward to mid the five fancy duns that are already there. In the last phase of qualifying. When you say two rounds of qualifiers. Because after this group stage, right, right, there's, okay. a, there's a second round and yeah, so on, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, a note on that. FIFA has six confederations who all hold qualifiers to determine which nations go to the, to the World Cup. In five of them, every nation starts in the same phase of qualifying and plays the same amount of qualifying games <laughs> to get to the World Cup. But we have a special, we have a special group. In CONCACAF... The most populous area in CONCACAF being the Caribbean, 25 out of 35 members have to earn the right to face Mexico and the United States on the football field. Feel free to reach out to your um, CFU delegate <laughs> and thank them for, um, for this position. <laughs> yeah. So, so there you go. You know, everyone is not equal in CONCACAF uh, and uh, Trinidad would be among the other 29 teams trying to, 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 to share a field with, with the United States, essentially, and Mexico. CONCACAF teaching us Animal Farm 101. <laughs> Football appetite? I didn't say that. I don't know if anybody might say that. I didn't say that. Um, and by the way, uh, when uh, John Williams, David John Williams, was voted in in 2015, uh, the Soka Warriors were ranked fourth in CONCACAF. And 49th in the world. So we would have actually been one of those... Top uh, five. Top 
five nations just kicking their feet up right now and, and, and relaxing and playing some friendlies. Mm-hmm. So, um, shout out to DJW <laughs> <laughs> for I, your work in reversing everything that, that, that Stephen had, all the gains made on the coach heart. Feel free to also, the, the other guys who played along with that, feel free to jump <laughs> and shout too. Yeah. You have us where you want us. <laughs> And that shout out should be sponsored by attorney uh, Anand Misir, who is probably selling me a pre action protocol letter on Tuesday. For birdie, yeah, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make this clear. All pre action protocols go to birdie. <laughs> so, okay, so there's six groups of, of five now. Well, of course, one, one has a, a country missing, decided to, to sit it out. You know, it's only every four years, you know, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> what we would do with all this money if FIFA give us any interim boy for, these, yeah. for the next four years, boy? Well, well. So, Group A, El Salvador, mini seeded uh, team, Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada, Montserrat, and US Virgin Islands. Now, why that group is important as well is because if we qualify on top of our group, we face the winner in Group A. So, you hear it again El Salvador, Antigua, Grenada, and Montserrat, and it's a Real toss up between between those four right now. Anybody could make it, with U.S. Virgin Islands being there to um, you know take licks. They had to have five in the group. <laughs> I'm thankful that they're there. They didn't take the route of um, yeah, Saint Lucia. Saint Lucia, right? Yeah. So thanks. Group F with with, with uh, the the Soka Warriors. We also have Saint Kitts and Nevis. Right now they are two points clear in the group. Um, you know, Trinidad and Tobago being the only seed of team right now that's Trinidad and points. Um, Guyana, Puerto Rico, and Bahamas. Uh, in Group B, we have Canada, Suriname, who just uh, got a, a busload of players from Europe. <laughs> Quality players, too. Yeah. Uh, football migrants, we call them. Uh, Bermuda, Cayman Islands, and Aruba. The winner from that group, Players the winner from Group E, which is Haiti, Nicaragua, Belize, Turks and Caicos Islands. Uh, Saint Lucia had the withdrawal from there. Um, Haiti is also under normalization, by the way, like Trinidad and Tobago, and um, maybe a little bit iffy so far in the start, but they're still up there. They have a, a decent group, I, I guess, to, to deal with, um, fighting for the right to. You know, probably get roughed up by Canada or Suriname because those teams look kind of immense right now. The the Canada Suriname group is going to go down to the last game. The yeah. the other two teams are not of of that quality, um, so it's going to go down to the very last game between, which is Canada's last game, which is Suriname's last game. So mm-hmm. that is going to be the decider. I'm looking forward to that game actually. Yeah, I mean Canadians very excited about the team. It's a sort of golden generation. What do you think? Um, Money. They have a. They. I saw them dismantle um, Cayman Islands. Mm. Yeah. I saw, the, oh, yes. I saw the second half of that. Double game. figures. Yeah. Eleven. I saw the second half of that game. Um, they have a a very athletic team. Mm-hmm. They have um, pace to burn on the wings of Alfonso Davies being one of those players. Um, but I like what I saw in Suriname. My, my issue with Suriname or, or the, the question mark with Suriname is whether or not the physicality that the Canadians are bringing to the table with their game, if they could deal with it. But in terms of the technical ability, Suriname, uh, I, I would advise anybody to take a look at them. Yeah. Yeah. One Sorry. thing, one thing to, um, to add, one fun point for people to look out for with Suriname Um Apai was Apai's first name. Dimitri Apai. Dimitri Apai, who played for W Connection. Yeah. Um, he is on that squad. So even if it is we may not advance, we still have another team. You're taking to some pride in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I grasping at anything right now that Trini. Okay. That good. have a Trini connection to it. I hope he's not owed any money from the Pro League. Oh gosh, let's go on to the next group, <laughs> brother. Group C, Curacao, Guatemala. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Cuba, the British Virgin Islands. You, you would think normally that group should be fairly even. It doesn't seem to be right now because Curacao with uh, what's what's Gus Hiddink? Gus Hiddink. Mm-hmm. And and they are getting on bad. Who sits on his um chair for the duration of the game that I saw against St. Vincent when they um won five 0 mm-hmm. with his legs crossed 
if you could have blanked out the, the background, you believe this man was having tea. <laughs> so calm he was. Yeah. And and under his, his feet would probably be the dreams of the former Curacao coach <laughs> <laughs> who who actually asked the Curacao FA if he could bring in Hiddink as a as an advisor and instead Hiddink took his job. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the thing that's how it goes. So all we can hope is that at the end of that, uh, Hedding takes Curacao to the World Cup. He, he took the man's um, hopes and dreams already. You know? But that is Group uh, C. Uh, in Group D, the two, the winner from Group C facing the group winner of Group D. Now we have Panama. This is an interesting group. Dominican Republic, Barbados, Dominica, and Anguilla. And why that is interesting, Barney? Because Panama is a nice destination. <laughs> <laughs> Though it's interesting because we have two Trinidad and, and Tobago. You throw away one, you throw away one Trinidad and there. Which one you throw away? Barbados, Dominica, Dominica sorry, and Anguilla. You oh, throw away sorry, somebody. Right, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Honest, honest mistake. Mm-hmm. We have three we, Trinidad coaches. He's still trying to get back at Russell Latapi. We know why. <laughs> <laughs> we know why the trauma in the secondary school football league feels. You can't get between me and my boy. So don't do that. Don't try to do that. <laughs> yeah, we have three Trinidad and Tobago coaches in that group. Russell Latapi coaching Barbados. Um, Stan John coaching Angola. Mm-hmm. And Rajesh Lachu coaching Dominica. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, I have not gotten the opportunity to see Dominica, but from the results that I am seeing and having spoken to Coach Lachu previously, I want to tip my hat to him from from you know from the results I'm seeing because they played against um, Dominican Republic. They played against Dominican Panama and Dominican Republic. Right. Yes. They played. They played against Panama, who is the number one seed in the group. Yeah, and they lost one 0 I believe. Yeah. Let me, let me just conf- and two one to Dominican Republic, or mm. is or is it the other way around? They lost, um, yes, they lost one nil to the Dominican Republic Probably in the first game, yeah. and then two, two one, one to, to Panama. Panama. And I mean against Panama up to the <coughs> the uh, eighty second minute, it was one all, and right. they they looked like a, a draw could happen. In the eighty fifth minute, Dominica lost that match. Mm. Five minutes left, you know, it would have been a great result. Yeah. Um, the same with fantastic result actually. Yeah, the same with Barbados. I I did get to see Barbados play um, Panama. Pan- Panama, and Barbados is organized. Um, they don't have that great amount of quality going forward, but they were organized. And same thing like with Dominica um, holding on. Barbados was nil nil up until the eighty third, eighty second minute, the eighty second minute, and they got. A goal scoring on them from um it was it a set play boy? Yes, it was. I think a it corner. Was. Yeah. I think it was. I, I think it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or am I tying up the Barbie? That's Angola game, game boy. Might I know might have been across, but yeah. a late a late and, dagger to yeah. the heart anyway yeah. for Barbados. Um and and it was it was a great effort, but it was unfortunate um that, that happened to Barbados then. And then Barbados went on to play Angola. And do the same thing to Stern, um, to Stern John's team after they had rebounded from from a trashing in the in the first game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yes, Angola lost six 0 to the Dominican Republic in their first game. Right. So it was it was a great effort, I I think, to um, to get your team back up and mm-hmm. and ready to compete so soon after that sort of score. And again, the Stern did a great job in terms of the defensive setup. They sat deeper. They, they um, they, they sat deep and made it more difficult for Barbados to penetrate, and they tried to play on the counter. Uh, the the thing about it is when they tried to play is when they looked like if they could concede. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, is is a matter of the the what these guys are working with. But hats off to the to the three of them so far with you know the efforts that they've put out with their teams. Yeah, and and to the credit of Angola as well. Uh, it's not as though Barbados were, were creating chances mm-hmm. and missing and, and so on. It was pretty, pretty solid stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know. And, and they lost they lost a set play. Yeah. They lost a set play. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Um, and uh, well, we would have a uh, story on, on Latapi, speaking of Latapi and Latrin, where they succeed right now. Uh, we do plan to have Latapi on the pod as soon as uh, Barney can get close to him. He has been trying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying for about 30 years now. I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get the, the producer's attention here. Why are paying for any advertising spots <laughs> on this thing? This man just blatantly advertising here. What's what going on? What's going on? I have a family to feed. What's going on? Cut this mic there, Corey. Cut this mic. <laughs> yes. So, um, Trudon and Tobago, after two games, we are unbeaten still. Um, the our qualifying campaign still in our own hands. So, uh, the glass half em, half empty or half full. Um, to help us provide context, we're gonna try to get um, uh, Fatima College technical director Hayden Martin. He holds a, a KNVB coaching instructor's license, and, and uh, he did give analysis again on why they take it because this is where you go. <laughs> This is where you go for all things football and all things intelligence. I'm going out for a water break. I'll come, come, I'll come do this. I can't take this. So, so let's get uh, let's get Hayden on, on on the phone here. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes, uh, Hayden. Uh, thanks for being on with us, the Birdie and Barney Show. Yes, thanks for having me. Coach, uh, you said that uh, Trinidad and Tobago's uh, second performance of the group was better than the first. Um, yes. Yeah, it, it, it was in certain respects. It was different. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, I mean, in a, in a result-oriented world, we're always tempted to think that uh, whichever uh, performance produces the results is the right one. Um, so you'd have to explain this alien concept of winning while doing the wrong thing, <laughs> which might be alien to a lot of, a lot of um, you know, uh, do I say uneducated football fans? There must be a softer word for that day. Barney, give me something nicer. Trinidadian football fans. <laughs> well, yeah. well, the, the, the thing about it, if it, if it was a, a one-off mm-hmm. and there were no games to follow and there were no other teams to play against that might be better, then that would suffice. But the point about it, you could be awful and win and sometimes the opponent is worse than you. So you win but you're not really up to scratch. And then there's another another scenario where they in fact get better than you, but you just happen to capitalize on whatever chances fell to you and they didn't. So you win. Mm-hmm. You know, but you have to look at the bigger picture, especially when in something like a World Cup qualifier, that that this that one game is not the be all and end all. We, you know, you ought to be thinking what would happen when we come up against the teams that have qualified out of the group stage mm-hmm. are going to be, I mean, miles above your, your present opponent that you're playing now. So you want to be getting to your best then. Yeah. In other words, so you, in other words, speaking, you, you, you want to be building on what you started with and getting yeah, incrementally yeah, better. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, here, here's, here's an interesting point too, right? That, um, and it relates to what Lazana opened the, the, the program with. That um you know results oriented thing. Once they once they get the win, then you ought to be you ought to be to be satisfied. You know, but the 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 thing about it is that this is a qualifier. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to be playing I would be I would be particularly worried if I enter a tournament or even a season and your very first game is your best performance, it means you will only go down after that. Fair so you don't want to be playing too well, you know, too early. But again, you you want to set something where you could be building from. I think Coach Fenwick had that covered. He certainly didn't do too well in the first game. The the um the the flip side to that Hayden is that in the in the World Cup qualifiers, how they are basically set up, you're really pay, playing two mini tournaments. So you're playing yeah, two yeah, games, yeah. and yeah. where where I hear you in terms of building to your best, you really do have time to work on correcting what's wrong between those two games, and you want yeah. you want to come out of those two games as much as possible with six points, 
Um, yeah. So I, I hear you with what you're saying, and, and, I, and I totally agree with you. But in this scenario, um, I, I think that, that the result, because of the time frame of the second game to the first game, the, 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 the distance, that you, you almost have to hit the ground running, bam, bam, yeah. for, for both games. Mm -hmm. um, what did you see in the first game from, from your coach's eye that, that you thought was lacking? Well, first he should just analyze the first game oh, yeah. for us All right. uh, against Guyana and then you know, give us your, your insight in terms of that. Well, um, I didn't rate Guyana very high technically. Maybe maybe one or two players. I was particularly impressed with one of the centre backs. Um, I think his name is Van Kooten. Yes, mm -hmm. plays yeah. in the English right. Championship. Who, yeah, you see, he right. Who you know, he he is a player. But other than that, I think I think the Guyana team was, I mean, a, a level if not a level two below. Not the, not not everybody, but player for player, team for team. I thought on a on a bad day we would have been better than them anyway. Um, having said that, though, you're still in a game and you still have to win your game. Mm -hmm. It appeared to me when I, in retrospect, that, and I'm guessing here, this is what it appeared to me that Fenwick's approach was: listen, today, just get the result to give us a good start as far as the point standing. Is concerned. I don't think it, it was he was too concerned. At least the team didn't play that way. Too concerned about uh, displaying any any play concept or anything like that. It was just that listen, let's just get the ball forward. If we could get Levi to cut in and get a couple of shots on and see if we could get the win. So the the because when I look at, at the Guyana game and I looked at the second game, that it was in a way, kind of, the whole approach was different. I, I mean, in, in fairness to TNT, I would say in the Puerto Rico game, they tried to play, which is more than, than the set for that first game. To me, it was get it long. We don't succeed with the first pass, fall into somebody behind the defense, let us win the second ball. We win it at the back, okay. Play it around a little bit and then long again. So it was, it was clear to me, it was to get the ball up the field and see if we can get on the score sheet and start off with the three points. And don't worry too much about, you know, style of play and playing brand and all. This is what it, it looked like. To now, me. Although we got the win against Guyana and a, a, a resounding win, I suppose, did those tactics actually work or did the goals come from something else? Um, well, it, it, you got the ball at the other end of the field and then things happen. Um, okay. I didn't find that that approach brought us any abundance of success because I think we were fortunate um, to get the, the three goals in the first place, although it should have been four with the penalty. Um, so it's, it's hard to say that it didn't work because one might argue, yeah, but you won the game. But I don't think it, it brought the kind of success that, it could have brought if it was working as a strategy, if, if, you, if you know what I mean. So, yes, from the point of view, we got the ball to the other end of the field and something happened. But I, I can't say that, well, the long pass was working because we had them, had the keeper making saves. The fella, I mean, had we had a couple of more shots on target, the scoreline would have been far different. You know, the guy, I, I, don't, know, I don't want to, to judge him. I mean, he made some good saves, but I, I don't think that brought the had them under the kind of pressure in terms of defending the goal mm -hmm. you know as a as a strategy but we got the ball to the other end of the field mm -hmm. and Guyana did change goalkeeper for the second match by the way what was the adjustment you thought was necessary watching the Guyana game and did you think that the port the the Puerto Rico game was a, a reflection of those adjustments or did he go with something totally different or the team go with something totally different <laughs> did he go with something totally different? Lasana trying to get into stuff that I have no no information on. So I sticking with the coach. Um I think the approach was totally different. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I think I mean it is something that they thought out and 
from the beginning, the approach to the game was, you know, outlined. We're going to do do this differently. And, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what what jumped out at me. Um, in the Ghana game, I find I I for me personally, I am not too much for this early penetration pass from deep in the because for me there are too many factors that may not be under your control. Mm-hmm. Depending on pace, Variables. and not always you will be faster than the defenders. And if they can't play a little bit and they're reading the long ball, which Guyana started to do after a while in that first game, then they're not going to be enjoying that success. So I, I do not subscribe to penetrating too early. But what came out at me in the second game, that they were actually trying to get the ball, particularly in the second half, get the ball into the next half of the field and play a little bit. And I thought they did that, which it was totally, it was not totally absent, but it was more the exception than the rule in the Guyana game. In the Puerto Rico game, it was more the rule than the exception. If I ask um, Martin, and stay on the first half, because you're, you're, well, I'm guessing that first half would have been plan A for the coach. How successful yeah. were, were, were the tactics for Trinidad and Tobago in, in that first half? Um... Well, I think too, and I mentioned it in the article. The the personnel, so I mean, with the, with the one, yeah, with the one change that he made on the half, it sort of bore fruit, and they were able now to do what they were trying to do in the first half. Mm-hmm. So to answer your question, how successful they were, they were not as um, consistent with that possession possession in the attacking half of the field as they were in the second half. But they were attempting to do it. They were taking the time and they were trying to get the ball there and play a little bit. But not to the extent that they were successful in the second half. All right. So you you spoke about the, the attempts to hold possession in the half, in the mm-hmm. attacking half, right? Yes. Um, we both know that teams do that to open up, to create an opening in your opposing defense that then play that penetrating ball. Um, yeah. I saw, I didn't see, I didn't see many attempts at that in the first half. Yes, they put the attempts at the possession and even the second half. But um, yeah. until Market came on at the half, although we were mm-hmm. attempting to keep possession, we weren't attempting yeah. to penetrate. No, I, I didn't find so as well. And I think I mentioned that. And that is what I meant when I said, like, what what's the force? Okay, so we, we, we get up, we keep it, we switch it, we introduce it, we keep it. What's supposed to happen? Who's supposed to be doing that penetration, making the penetrating runs off the ball? What's supposed to happen? Are we looking for one, two, to try and go to the middle? Are we looking to send somebody through on a true ball? What what are we trying to do? And to me, it was we keep it. And eventually the ball will go wide, maybe to Levi. And, and this is what I, I mentioned. After a while, I mean, things become predictable that yes, he is going to go to the byline. But then again, he must come back on the left foot to try and play a ball maybe to the top of the box. Or if he could open up the angle a little bit to get the shot. That was, the, that, was, that, was, that was all that there was. So the possession, when we get there, Things supposed to happen. We're getting the people forward. I saw somebody made a comment that uh, about players getting. We are getting people forward, but they're not doing anything when they get forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they you start. know, you look. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. You, yeah, you look to see like okay. I also mentioned we get the ball in the wide. We have people forward, but you're not seeing at least not consistently. I like, look people lining and getting in a position to line up for uh, an incoming cross. You know. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, don't, I, it, I don't even, it doesn't appear to as if the players are quite sure what, what happens next, what's supposed to happen when we reach up there. You know, are we setting somebody at the top of the box for a shot? I saw they attempted that a couple of times, but it, it cannot be the only thing. And, and the, the person coming on to hit the shot, not coming on to hit the shot as if they're expecting, well, listen. You know, we work on this, the ball is played back, and I know what I've come in to go top corner or what. It, it, it more look like, okay, this is this is the play at the moment, so we do it. Mm. As compared to 
what what are we actually looking for? Why are we keeping possession in their heart? What are we looking to do? I I didn't think that was very clear to me. And so so that is an area definitely that they would have to work on. And one more thing, as you mentioned, the the, the change of of tactics, which uh, appeared to suit market better against Puerto Rico, or, or, or he thrived. Now, um, a lot of people felt Daniel Phillips had a good debut against Guyana. Um, is it that you felt the tactics used against Guyana suited uh, Phillips better than, than the, the style against Puerto Rico? Or, or was it just... Quality of opponent could be... Part yeah, of or, you know, I, mean, I know we're still learning this, <laughs> this, this young fella. We don't know uh, him as a player that much. But, you know, what do you think accounts for... The, the change in, in um, you know, his effectiveness, let's say, over the two games? Um, it, it could be that. It could be, it could be that he is not the type of player who, you know, looks for the ball coming back to him or maybe make a, a short run to get it from the midfielders. It appears to me as if he prefer to be facing the goal. Same thing with several people to be facing the goal. So I think the change in tactics might have not be, you know, what he's comfortable with. As I say, I don't know these guys very well. I don't know what they practice. I don't know what the plan is. But I kept looking at him and I kept looking at Telfer to see when we have possession of the ball, what are they doing? And I mean... It, it doesn't appear to me as if they're actually looking for or expecting the ball to be played into them, which which again would mean that you're playing with your back to the goal. <laughs> you know, it, it, does, it didn't look that way to me. So I, I am thinking maybe he prefers to be facing the goal, to get the ball turned and be facing the goal. I mean, you, you made a point about Telfer. Now, I... Telfer started off as a, as a winger for us under, under Dennis Lawrence. Um, I thought maybe it is his physique and so on. Maybe. Because mm-hmm. we haven't had a number nine since Kenwin Jones. So, you know, okay. I, I also, as much as, um, as Fennec put him there, I, I also was hoping to see something from him, you know, up front. Um, you felt he, he, he still lacked a lot of the things he needed to do for his team as a forward. That's 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 fair assessment. Well, certainly, but certainly as certainly as a nine, as a nine, yeah, mm-hmm. certainly as a nine. Because I'll tell you what what I what I, I look for. I mean, as I had a conversation with a very good friend of mine, and he was telling me that um, the disadvantage that I was at, I was seeing the game on TV. Mm-hmm. So I can't see the whole thing. I am limited in my view, you know, up to what the camera affords me. But I tend to look to see what is happening. And if I'm not senior, that the game goes on and your name is never called because you're not, you're not getting the ball. So I don't know if you're running your liver string out and you're not giving it to you, but you're not getting on the ball. And the only time that to me, Telfer appears to get on the ball as if he goes on sometimes a diagonal run and the ball is in front of him and he's running safe with a defender, you know, in attendance. Mm-hmm. Um, I've saw it a lot against Guyana. And to me, his strength is strong physically. And his other strength is that he likes to run with the ball. He, you know, he's that sort of power. Chase the ball, get the ball, try to cut in and go to goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and which would, which would, Sort of be reflected in what you said about him being a winger because um, the, the cross he made uh, oh, for us to get the goal mm-hmm. that was perhaps the you know, one and only thing that you could credit him for in the match. I mean, I'm going out on a limb here based on what I saw <laughs> as, a num- as, a number, as a number nine. Mm-hmm. As a number nine, he's not enough to me in the game. Or the same thing against Guyana, he's not enough in the game as a nine. And I think it's because that if you're building up, he has, he is the target. That's the way, that is my understanding. He triggers everything as a nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know, I don't know if that is happening to me. It looks as whatever we do, invariably, we want the ball to end up with Levi Garcia. Mm-hmm. Right. Even the long, even the long, the long balls against Guyana. None of those balls, at least in this first half, 
Jadi second half, a little bit against Guyana. That those balls were aimed at Telfer, mm-hmm. you know, and that he got on the end of it. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I mean, as I say, I don't know what Terry's, what Terry's plan is. If that is the way he wants him to play, I don't know what you know. He did say he hasn't he hasn't revealed what his his concept is, except that it it's not, it's going to be one that suits us. Um, I am not sure what that means, but I I think if we're gonna play a a, a build up game, then you need to have a nine that can serve as a target, and I don't see Ryan as that at all. As I say, I don't know if he is running off, you know, freeing himself and they just not playing it into him. To me, it seems as though a lot of the balls that played into that central area goes to Kaleem. Mm. You know, so I do I, I, say, I think coming out of the um the USA game, I don't mm-hmm. believe um we are going to be playing balls down the center. Um because in that game, when the balls were played down the center, and it, it kind of adds into what you're saying, Telf is a physical guy, but he was never winning that battle with the um, with the the with US, the defenders, US central defenders. yeah central defenders there. I think the plan is to go down the channels either side of the stoppers. So that's why you would see um, Levi on one side and and um, Joven Jones and Joven on the other side, being the ones closer to that initial long ball. Uh, but yeah. but even after that, when we win the ball back and, and we in that half of the field, you're not seeing what you are asking for, which is that ball into the nine to trigger something coming off of that. You're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're not seeing. So I'm in total agreement with you there. I wasn't seeing that either. Mm-hmm. Now, now the, the coach has said, um, has been saying for a while that, that he has several um, foreign players that he wants to, to bring in. Uh, I suppose you're saying a, a nine should probably be on the wish list. Um, you think our main issue right now, though, is, is just uh, the quality of the players on the field? You think that once that is sorted out, we're good to go? Well, I wouldn't know. It, it would certainly give us a little extra something. I mean, I they have some some positions that I think you could get. You you you. Require a lot, a lot more from. Um, mm-hmm. I mentioned also the, the wing back. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Neville is a good, strong player, yeah, but part of uh, an important part of his job is is not being done. He, you know, doesn't have it in him. I imagine that you know, we, we we need to get somebody a little more mobile and a little more adventurous than that. Mm-hmm. Um, you say he's not pushing far enough ahead to, to, to help out the yeah. the attack. Yeah, no, well, yeah, well, no, well. In the in the game today, that 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 flank position is shared by the wing back and the wide forward. Mm-hmm. You know, either the wide forward stays wide and the wing back would go inside. Um, as we used to see with with Ronaldo and Marcelo when they were at Real Madrid, or the the yeah. winger, the wing forward <laughs> comes inside. And the wing back goes down the side of the field and cross the ball, and and those those boys are missing in action. You know when you're looking at that. I mean, you see, um, I see Aubrey and maybe Nabil himself at times would play over the half, but you hardly see they they do come down by the corner. They you know, mm-hmm. and I think that is an element of our game that we could use and is missing. Um, I was thinking to that's just in my head in the last in that last game when it was one one and Juvin came off. Um maybe Telfer could have gone wide from where he delivered the cross and we could have introduced Brent Sam. Oh, you know, nice because up. the Puerto Ricans are not very tall. So okay. let's get some balls coming across and see what happens. Mm-hmm. But he didn't going back to the um to the the comment about the wing backs. Do you think that is a is is for the want of the ability, or they are following coaches' instructions? I haven't well, watched I a, a couple I... <laughs> um, training games. I yeah. I want to believe that that is what is being asked of them. Well, 
I can't I can't speak to that. Um, um, one would wonder why, because here, here's the interesting thing. Over the two days, right, I have seen, again, I, I, I'm not saying my memory is 100% at this age, but I cannot, generously, I cannot say I have seen five crosses all together come from the side of our feet into that box. Yes. That is what gives us the goal against Puerto Rico. So is it that we are not going to utilize that um, facility to get a goal? Because Levi, when he's on the left side, is not crossing the ball because he's on his right foot. And he, particularly in that Puerto Rico game, he comes back on the left foot, they're waiting on him to do it, and then they just take the ball. So he doesn't have the time to say, you know, sometimes you have a wrong for this player playing on a particular flank. And he goes down the side, he does a trick, and then he crosses the ball or in swing away the other foot. I didn't see that happening a whole lot. Juven, on the other hand, is the same thing. They come into the edge of the 18 and looking to go inside. And that's the point that I was making. And I was thinking, at one point I saw him come to the edge of the 18 didn't go down the side of the box and he is making a sign for somebody to overlap him. Well, of course, it didn't happen. Mm. Well, go down the side and you cross it. Mm. You know, Telfer is not a short guy. He's not small. You know, and I, I think we're not using we're not using that. You know what is the question I would like to ask, although I feel I know the answer. Mm. How are we expected to score? Other than Garcia comes down the, the side of the field, gets on the inside, gets back on his left foot, shoots to the far post, or beats the keeper on the first post. Come down the side of the field, come back on the left foot, lay a ball back across the box. What else? Sad play. You know, I, I mean, in my limited way, I, I think that because no, but here's here's the here's the, the, the interesting thing too. I don't think that of course the team could be better, but I wouldn't say honestly it's a bad team. You know, I think I think with a few changes here, I think the the, the squad I mean, yes, we in transition as Terry C and his younger players. I, I don't feel younger players would have survived out there at all. I think that age group that we have there, that is that is what we could do. You have better players with the experience. Let them bring them and let them do the job. Mm-hmm. You know, but as I say, lots to be done still. It, but it could be done. It could be done. All other things being equal, there is sufficient time to fix what needs to be fixed. And as I say, if it is, if it is that the players are following the coaches' instructions. Well, I I would then one would have to question, you know, whether or not this is what we, you know, we should have and going to give us the best chance of success. But I, I don't think um that the 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 the, 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 the squad is a bad squad, it's not the best. I mean we talk about development and by now we're supposed to have players who know you when you pick a pick a player. He knows exactly what he has to do, you know, and it's, it's just uh, the coach to guide him and him to get some playing time and uh, a chemistry between the players. But we don't have that because of the way we approach things in in in, in football in this country. What we have, I think, I think we could um, we could we could still do something with it. I want to say something about the the point you made about the players going back to the clubs. My understanding of it is, if you are a professional player. I don't think that I need a hundred hours of practice with you to get you to understand this is what I need you to do. If 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 we're going down the road, well, I accustomed doing something different in my club. Yeah, well then I'm not calling you, then you are not the one that I need. I'm going to call somebody who either their natural game is what I'm looking for, or somebody who is mature enough. That when I say yes, I know you are custom. 
making this run out wide when you're playing for Genk or whoever. But today, based on what we have, I need you to maybe stay a little more central and let somebody else do that. You're a professional, I would think. So and the coach has to explain to... his ideas, I guess, clearly. Yeah, I, I feel that's like how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So, you know. I and then we have a couple... with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have a couple of practices, you know, just a, a kind of rehearsal. But you're a professional, I would think. But boy, we're talking about Trinidadians there, so. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden, I want to thank you for this time that you spent with us. Um, yeah, the pleasure was mine. It, it is always a pleasure learning from the master and listening to the master. And I'm not talking about Lassan, I'm not talking about you. Because he, he, he are trying to push up himself like if he is... You know, this Lassi will get you everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know how we roll. You know how we roll. <laughs> All right, Aiden. Okay, guys. Thanks okay, a lot. Thanks. Okay, thank you, guys. Well, yeah, we doing these interviews via um, phone call and Lasana was running out of money. Then. That's why we had to wrap it up. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Abla, he said the man Abla. <laughs> I, I, I mentioned Hayden Martin as the, the TD of Fatima College. Oh, oh, it'd be remiss of me <laughs> not to say that that is most famous really for his work at St. Mary's College where he, he and just quite a lot of, of talented players, yeah. Lyndon Andrews, the Moe's brothers, um, the Rocks, and, and so on. Yeah. Mm, who, you who, call Shaka, boy. Right? <laughs> Shaka, <laughs> he's your lowly, this man, have you know? <laughs> the Hislops. I was getting to, I was getting yeah. to that. I was getting to that. You're getting to the lower ones now. <laughs> Pass through the, the, the system. So, so thanks to, to, to uh, Mr. Martin for coming on and sharing some, I would, some tactical. Um, it's good to have some good tactical <laughs> ideas in the pod. You would never hear me have a bad word to say about Hayden Martin when I played for Fatima. <laughs> when we won against uh, that same team with um, those, those guys you called. I, I don't right? think so. Oh, think no, so. yeah. League champions. Cool yourself. When we won. <laughs> On mm. the field, I always used to wonder why St. Mary's was giving us trouble because the players weren't that good besides <laughs> a couple of the guys that he called there. But having an opportunity to work, to work with Hayden Martin, I realized mm. your yeah, coaching really, really counts. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the difference. So you never hear me have a bad way to say about him, but he's a Fatima Pass student. So, <laughs> so we have with us now uh, Sean Powder. He's uh, the former director of the TTFA's uh, TIP Scouting program in North America. <laughs> what TIP stands for? <laughs> I mean, we're speaking about lack and penetration. We're speaking about St. <laughs> Lucia withdrawal from the World Cup. And <laughs> now we have the man from TIP. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Sean, good to have you uh, on the birdie and Barney this week. It's good to be here. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> no problem, no problem. And for, for everyone... Uh, uh, Mr. Powder was the why did succeed <laughs> correspondent oh, for the last two World Cup qualifiers. We're very grateful for his, his colorful commentary on spot, you know, talking about the emperor's missing jockey shorts. And, and <laughs> <laughs> All right. well, 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 I'm grateful for an excellent editor. Without the editor, I, I wouldn't have been able to. Uh... Take produce that, such eloquent words. Take oh, that, Barney. Take that, Barney. Earl Best worked on your article. <laughs> Earl Best is indeed a very good editor. Because it couldn't be Lasana you tried to say. <laughs> Had to be Earl Best work on your article for you. Tell us what you thought about the, the, this, ad, this adventure. You're, you're talking about the time of COVID and you, you, you're flying between countries. And what was the protocol like at these venues and so on, um, first of all? And, and the, the travel. What's the travel like? Well, the travel of, from the U.S. into the Dominican Republic was rather, was rather, rather smooth. I mean, I was there in November, and um, on the, I was here recently for the match. And I mean, the Dominicans have set up a very smooth system. You you can fly in from the U.S. and you you're not tested, but upon exit, if you're returning to the U.S., you have to get tested. And they have um, a, a meter. I think it's called a meter labs. And they have a lab at the airport. They have a testing facility airport for PCR tests. Within five hours, you're tested and you're able to, to leave. I mean, I went to a couple of tourist sites in uh, Santo Domingo, and you had um, I, 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 there were Russians there, there were Germans there, there were Dutch there, the Italians. The Dominican Republic is rather open. That's why I was laughing. Maybe it's the new capital of the CFU because yeah. I think I don't know how. 
I don't know how many of our, how many countries were there playing games. Yeah, you know, yeah. they they sound almost <laughs> as um as, as you know well structured as the Trinidad and Tobago immigration policy right now, which is we don't let you in. So it, it's working very very smoothly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless you're coming on a boat from Venezuela, I suppose, but. <laughs> yeah, as, as as cases rise, we have a, a lockdown policy and no recreational activity. Yeah, yeah. well, but, so. actually, recreation is allowed mm. once you're on the beach. Yeah. You could play football. Yeah, <laughs> you, want to be? yeah you can play football. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Drinking is fine. Once is not near to a football ground, and there's no football okay. present. Other than that, you're okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. a no sport policy. And and what about flying into to Puerto Rico? What, what was it like over there? Well, 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 well uh, leaving the Dominican Republic, we ha- you have to have a, um, a positive PCR result on, after the 26th of January. I guess the and U.S. Negative, government like required it. A negative, yeah, negative. The negative PCR is positive tests. these days, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 <laughs> so you, you can upload everything via an app. So I took a test in Dominican Republic. They emailed me a result. That result, I was able to upload in Puerto Rico to our website that they have. That cleared me for transit because I had a negative result. And I, you really, even though in Puerto Rico, they have um, tables of men and, men and women in white suits taking your data. They're mainly doing data entry on everybody. They take your result. They can upload it to the same website. And then it goes to the airlines. You can fly. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 amazing how with technology, I mean, they, they have the testing, they have the ability to control the results and to communicate the results. So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you're free to travel between in, into the U.S. Um, from the Dominican Republic and to the U.S. and other places. I mean, I, I think I'll test it again in June, June when I go to the Bahamas. But I know I have friends who are going to the Bahamas and travel in other places in the Caribbean. They don't seem to be having the problem. That we have in, in Trinidad and Tobago, where you, you know you're locked out of the country. Yeah, I mean it seems a little, a little bit intimidating to me to, to at the airport with all these white coats. I mean, as if oh, being yeah, at yeah, the yeah. airport isn't stressful enough already, you know. You, you had a flight yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I, it, 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 until I found out what they were doing, I was quite shocked <laughs> to be honest. Because you come off the plane and you see every, masked. Um, gloves and contamination suits. You, you're wanting to know if it's uh, they have Ebola in, in Puerto Rico or something. So, <laughs> so, 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 and, and nobody was smiling. So you're, they're just pointing you in this direction, pointing in that direction. So you know it, that was a bit. Uh, you're correct. It was a bit stressful, mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. but the, the, the technology and and the ability to test made it very smooth once you figure out what the hell was going on. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, yeah. and how did you in, in, enjoy the football? You know, first of all, uh, in uh, was it it's San Cristobal, right? Uh, yes, San, in San Cristobal. Yes, yeah, yeah San Cristobal. Our first game yeah. the campaign. What was that like? Um, first of all, I, I, uh, my GPS was very flawed, so <laughs> I, I ended up, I ended up I ended up uh, forty minutes in, uh, close to the game. I ended up up in the mountains. In a neighborhood on a gravel road, with uh, some locals <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> do you see? Do you see a stadium anywhere here? But, uh, <laughs> Thought they were looking at uh, trying to find one of the air balls from the defense there. What going? <laughs> so well, if, by the time I got to the game, I, we, the only way I knew there was a stadium is by the lights, yeah. because the stadium is literally on a on a, um, a road that you don't really ac- you can't access. It's behind part of a, a very forested area. So you make you come down a uh, 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 you come down a hill, and um, they make a sharp left, and you're up into the stadium right away, yeah. almost into the bush. So, and one way in, one way out. And they put that uh, on the to shame, boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not really. It took that about the same number of um, persons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the atmosphere was good. The stadium, uh, all, all that said, the stadium was very clean. Very well maintained. I'm in a small parking lot, but I mean, mm-hmm. it was spotless in the place. Uh, yeah, that was a small concession. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the locals found it. Eh? The, the locals found it because there are quite a few locals there. Okay. And, okay. Um, and you, you, you had Presidente Light and Popcorn. Those were your two options at the, <laughs> the, you know, that's what you got at the, con- at the concession. <laughs> Bears and Popcorn. Uh, wow. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Very salty popcorn too, but um, <laughs> uh, to, to encourage you to buy some more beers, I imagine. But the uh, 
But yeah, the, the, the football part was, um, you know, I mean, the, the, I don't know how much football we're going to talk, but the Guyana game was, you know, a, a, ser- a, series, a series of mistakes. Before you get into the game <laughs> itself, let me just ask you, the, 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 the playing surface, it was as bad as it looked on TV? Uh, yes, it was. All right. And they were, and 20 minutes, up to 10, 15 minutes before the game, they were still watering it. Mm, wow. They were still watering it, so. Mm. On TV, it looked hard and bumpy. That's yeah, it was. It, it was. It was. It was. Mm. That, that, that was the cannons going, but like I said, since the field was elevated, I figured a lot of that just drained away. I mean, you probably, um, you, you, you needed to have, I think even if they watered excessively, they're still right, because the field is so elevated on this plateau, you just could see all, I, I don't think they had, you know, proper stone um, around it and the proper construction to, to slow the, the, the drainage. Right. Yeah. So basically the, the, water, the water was being absorbed. Mm-hmm. And, yet when you, and you have that many trees around the entire perimeter, Mm-hmm. I mean, they need water, so all the water I think was quickly disappearing. Yeah, um, oh. but they did, and, but they, they had some holes. The, I don't know how well you can see the TV, but they had quite a few patches mm-hmm. where they tried to infill with some grass. Um, you could mm-hmm. see a lot of circular areas uh, where, they, where they tried to just fill in. Mm-hmm. Um, probably a couple of days before. Interesting. You see, um, mm-hmm. we don't really have the opportunity to ask. You know, Mr. Fenwick, if he altered tactics based on the ground, maybe that's why they, they went to Route 1. But the last time I tried to get close to, to Mr. Fenwick to ask him some questions, it didn't go well for everybody, you know? <laughs> but, they, <laughs> but there might have been a feasible reason for the tactics. Well, what do you think, um, Barney? Me, I have nothing to say. <laughs> I am absolutely nothing. No, so maybe this, the, 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 the no, surface... Ser- seriously, no, yeah. That, that could have um, <clears throat> played into it. They would have known the venue mm-hmm. beforehand, um, probably would have done the due diligence and heard that the surface wasn't the best and decided to go route one. However, if that was the case, then your personal should reflect that as well. So, I, mm-hmm. I, and then your, 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 your practice games leading up to it should reflect that as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's a possibility. I don't know. On a, on, a on a scale of one to ten, on a scale of one to ten, on how much that really played into it, but it is, yeah, it's a possibility. Yeah. So, okay. would it have been a possibility in Miami as well? Um, I was oh, asked, Orlando, Orlando. I'm I, sorry, Orlando. I was asked, Orlando. I was asked about the guy again. Thanks very much. <laughs> Horrible surface in Orlando as well. But anyway, let's let's go back. <laughs> So, so what, what was the atmosphere, game, game time, and so on? Um, I, I suppose, uh, as you mentioned in the report, that um, Fennec, Fennec, um, you know, offered a, a sort of running commentary in his own match. He's a very vocal coach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he doesn't. Um, I think it, it, for sure, the, 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 the grass in the technical area was was much was worn after the match. Um, <laughs> because if you thought if you thought the rest of it was bumpy. There wasn't much, you know, much grass left in the technical area. Um, you know, he, he, listen, every coach has their style, and I, I think um, he communicates a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, he communicates a lot. It's just um, you in in in, in San Cristobal, you're so close to the pitch, you can hear every word he's saying virtually. Yeah. So the the problem is, it's the same words over and over. So I, I don't, you know, I don't know what his, um, I have no idea what his tactical plan was. Um, but some of those words didn't seem to be much, you know, closer than close is just that. How close can you get? You know, if you say, if you say close 25 times, you know, it, it, to the players, I don't know if it's going to, you know, mm-hmm. uh, how the impact is going to be. Let's put it that way. Well, the, the, the players, it may not hold relevance to you and I, but if the players reacted to it, I, I suppose, you know, mm-hmm. you could say, well, he has a certain way of communicating with them. Hmm. You know, the, the, listen, the players certainly want to win. Um, I, I see, for me, I see players that I feel, um, I, I sense there's a bit of a tussle there in how we want to play and how the player, how the coach wants them to play and the players. I mean, there's always going to be tension between the coach and players because you're going to tell a player to, you know, drop. We're going to tell him to, to, to play a little differently. 
But I, I, I don't get the sense when I will look at the team that everybody's on board with whatever the game plan is. Mm. Um, that, that's just, there's just a little tension there. The facial expressions, some, you know, players, they're not pouting, but you could tell when players are happy to play. Mm. Um, and I don't see that type of, um, I don't see that throughout 11 players, but I see players being professional mm-hmm. and, and I, I, they're being very professional and sticking to their task. But you, you know, you, when you look across the field, you don't see smiles. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when I think when players are enjoying their football, even when certain things happen, even when they're winning, they're scoring goals. It's not like, you know, the players know that they're not euphoric about how they receive the goals. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think I don't think some of the goals we scored, players will be putting in the highlight film <laughs> after Guyana, after yeah. Guyana, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and the Guyana players themselves were, were they just shell shocked really after the first two goals um, flew in? What 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 did you, what was he feeling from their camp? Um, I, I, they, they, after the first two goals, I think they kind of threw it in. They, they kind of threw it in. They um, they they. They didn't have a lot of belief after that. Mm-hmm. They really didn't. They really didn't. I mean, it, it, a lot of the, Ghana had quite a few people in the, um, not in their technical area, but up in the stands who were officials from the federation. Oh. I mean, and they really, they really had high expectation. I mean, they felt they truly underperformed. Mm-hmm. They were very, very frustrated and surprised with the result. Mm-hmm. They felt that the, the team was going to do much better than this. And I, I mean, some of that may come to the fact that listen, you know. We we didn't outplay them in terms of how we got the goals, mm-hmm. you know. We didn't we, we didn't football them off the pitch, you know. Levi's first goal was you know it's a good goal. I'm happy to get it, but it's a, you know an error. Something should have been easily managed. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Tell first goal, yeah. But the defender tell first goal is goalie error. So from their standpoint, they felt it was three mistakes, mm-hmm. and that's something that they could have dealt with better. Yeah. Well, the the group is. Perch in a certain way now because if Guyana beats St. Kitts, it, it throws the whole group open again because it means yeah. Guyana could actually sneak in according to how, um, well, if I guess Trinidad and St. Kitts, Kitts draw yeah. or something like that, or you know, yeah, so, yeah, so they aren't out of it yet. Did you get a chance to, to speak to either uh, coach after that game? Was there any sort of a press conference or anything? No, 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 no. I mean, when I got there in San Cristobal, I think, um. <clears throat> I saw Sean, there's a bit of miscommunication with where uh, the press would be and then where the people represented why 868 would be. <laughs> so, <laughs> Don't take any nonsense, Sean. No way. Don't take any nonsense. <laughs> so, so, no, so, so, I mean, initially the, the officials there, the, the, the Dominican officials from the Federation instructed me to be down closer to the pitch. Mm-hmm. But, um, when I I, I, spoke, I saw on the way down there, I spoke with Sean Fuentes, and um, he said, "No, you know, we're going to try and do something after the game, but we want you upstairs. We want you upstairs." And so, no problem. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I went upstairs, and um, you know, I had good access to everything they need to have. But uh, no, I they didn't. Um, I, I, I didn't. When I came back downstairs at the end, it didn't seem like there was any setup for any press. I think. From my understanding, it seems that the federation was prepared to do some, um, some. They had pre-planned to do some just video. Yeah. Um, their own, and, um, their own um, press, whatever they call it, when we're friends. Yeah. Ask questions, as opposed to journalists Pre- asking questions. Precisely, precisely. That's the. Uh, I think. I think we were at that. They were at that point, and some of that is maybe, I guess, being traveling away from home and not having. A you know, full setup of the facilities well, at the location. The Guyana F um, Football Federation, by the way, they had virtual press conferences huh, that that Guyana journalists mm-hmm. could attend from back in, in Georgetown. And in fact, I even got an invitation, so I actually attended their pre-match and post-match. It's a uh, it's a pity we are not um, as adv- as advanced as Guyana. You know, but yeah, well, well, you, well, you could see that in also our, our immigration policy for nationals. That <laughs> <laughs> I expect an call after this interview. I mean, I just wait for we're trying to, we're trying to ship Barney out right now, I so that's why he's, he's kind of squirming over here. I'm just waiting for this call after this interview. Yeah, in this country now, we need permission to to, to leave 
the country permission to come back in. You know, welcome to North Korea. Oh, yeah. awesome. We're yeah. Done, we're done with sports. The two all here. I just want to know. We, we're done with sports. I can leave, I can leave this chat. <laughs> okay. So, so we're going to Puerto Rico now, Sean. And, hold on, and, and, hold on. We're oh, going sorry. Puerto Rico. Yeah. Sorry. Barney has a question. Yeah, yeah. You so want to be on the border. We, we <laughs> want Puerto Rico yet. T- <laughs> tell me about the energy levels of the players during that Guyana game. You, you saw us as, as being, you know, matching them totally people were winded i you know we have a limited view on the tv here you were seeing uh, when the ball goes out to play how people the body the body language that sort of thing you spoke about um the enthusiasm but now from an energy level from a fitness level and thing how did we look um i i, I would say we're not you know the, the play honestly i i think the players Play, our players played down to the competition mm. in terms of energy, intensity. Um, we may have been slightly fitter, but no one was rushing to get the throw-ins, to get the ball back into play. You know, even the free kick that we scored, and everything was sort of pedestrian, mm. you know. Uh, so so I, I, I just don't think that I, – I think we played down to the competition, and, I, I, and particularly if you look at how the second half went. We should have had another gear up three nil. You mm-hmm. thought you would have seen something different in terms of how we played. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't see that sort of energy level or drive yet. I mean, it's 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 Fenwick's second game, and he has a lot to do to get the players going. He's into his third game now, but by then, second game, I, th- I think there's a lot that has to happen because he's working with a lot of home base local players. Then he's bringing in players from abroad who's got to get accustomed to his tone and his motivation techniques quickly. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to take a little time. Okay. Okay. I think that's going to take a little time, but, it, it, but I, it, if you, t- if you're asking me if I see warriors out there, I don't think for what some of those players can do at their clubs. And I've seen them do before. I don't think they're at that level yet of, of passion. I think they, but, that, but certainly they're going to get there. They're going to have to get there, you know, to beat St. Kitts and to, you know, deal with Bahamas. Yeah. And what about um, in Puerto Rico, in terms of the same uh, energy levels and enthusiasm and so on? How did we look then? And now we face the different I, I, I think we were higher. I, I do think we were, I think we were higher. I think the intensity, I think the, the team expected a better game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they started off that way where there was a lot more possession, I believe, at the beginning. Um, and I think they came out with a different mindset mm-hmm. uh, in that game. Okay. Um but the team also to the other issue about the, what what Bonnie just asked about fitness. I think the team looked a little. They got they got tired faster. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the turnaround was tough mm. for for players not playing all the time, and you know, not for all, but certainly for some. You could see some players did tire. Mm-hmm. I have um, <laughs> I've been hearing whispers. From friends in Puerto Rico. Manny <laughs> uh-huh. no, doesn't have any friends in Puerto Rico, sure. No, no. Manny didn't no. have friends in Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 the friends in Puerto Rico could have whispered to friends in Arima or somewhere else. <laughs> whispers travel. But I've been yes. hearing whispers from my friends in Puerto Rico, where, you know, me hablo un poco de español, right? um, that, that we actually did a double session the day before the game. A session in the morning of the game, dependent on what it is, isn't harmful, you know. Like if a it, video if session activ- or something, I mean. Or if it's, oh, a, yeah, or if yeah. it's, a, if it's an activation session or a stretching, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, a very short exactly. Session, that isn't harmful. But what I was hearing, whispers from friends in Puerto Rico, <laughs> is that um, it was two full sessions the day before the game. Now, when you add that, to the fact that we played Thursday night, correct me, Lasana. Thursday yeah. night? Yeah. That we played Thursday night, that we traveled Thursday night, which meant that we went to sleep late. Um, we, we, and for the hours that you lose sleeping before 12, the hours, it, it doesn't make, just sleeping longer doesn't make back, doesn't um, get you back the type of rest that you needed. So having traveled, played the night, traveled late, got in the next day, train the evening, then a double session the next day, and then you're going to play. What you've really done there, if this is true, what you've really done there is fatigued yourself. 
No, absolutely. And and let me tell you, the, 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 I mean, the fitness, the football part, you're 100% correct. Um, and I agree. The, the, the thing that I think you, 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 you're saying, but you're not elaborating, is that that travel from San Juan, from um, Santo Domingo to San Juan, then San Juan to even either Agodillo or Mayaquez, was not an easy trip for them. I don't know if they got a charter or how they did it from um, from um, from Santo Domingo to Aguadilla, but it wouldn't have been an easy trip, and then there would have been a coach cool ride in there. I thought it, we would have been better served traveling the next day, sleeping after mm -hmm. the game, sleeping um, yeah. as late as um, 9, 10 if possible, and then travel midday the next day and um, yeah. get there, relax, and then, you know, we do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, and there isn't, well, in my limited coaching knowledge, there isn't mm -hmm. much that you're going to be able to change between Thursday to Saturday that you could really work on. Most of that change has to be, you know, board work and conversation and that sort of thing, video work. Yeah, exactly. So, so, um, but 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 I'll say this, uh, being, being around, and this is prior to obviously Phoenix involvement, there seems to be a philosophy around our teams, because I saw this with the Anderson in the 20s, where not only do they like to, I don't know if it's the physio information, because this could be different physios, because I don't know who the physios were. They seem to like to do double sessions. Before, we seem to like to do double sessions before the games. And not only that, we we, we, we don't do our, we don't always just do our walk through the morning of the match. Sometimes they like to do a little running. You know, not, <laughs> and that's been my experience with the under 17 and the 20, which was quite shocking to me. Because you have a match the next day and you're going to have a match in two or three days but they, our practice has been to do it in my limited involvement with the under 17s and 20 and now with the senior team. Mm. Um, I think, I don't think it's, it doesn't seem to make sense to me, but I, I mean, I'm not a physio and I'm not a coach. I don't know what levels my players are. I'm not testing them. Well, as you said, physio, Dr. Obergolston always gets on me with this one. We're going to get a call from, we're gonna get a call from Uber, We can get a sure. call from Dr. Goldston. <laughs> the sure. TTFA generally does not hire physios. They hire okay. medics. Mm -hmm. And they put the, under the name, by the name physio. You know, which, okay. is, which is like, uh, I, I don't know, calling... Um, uh, <laughs> Calling but, Lasana, journalist. <laughs> that, that'd be a very bad, a very bad analogy. But, <laughs> but you know what I mean. They're not trained or licensed or whatever it is. So, so in fact, they are not physiotherapists at all. They, they, they're just medics. Who some, some of them did. Well, I mean, I don't want to, to besmirch these, these, these men <laughs> <Big word. laughs> who are working. But all the same, they, they generally speaking, are not trained physiotherapists. But, but okay. like that, you know, I, I take, I take your point. Um, in Puerto Rico, this time, it, nil nil at, at the half. So it's a different type of game. Um, and we came out in the second half, and to the credit, we actually took the lead despite being under, under, under pressure for a lot of the first half. Um, so what do you see then in terms of the, how they responded so to the pressure? we're not talking about the first half at all. You just, you just <laughs> cut the game into 45 minutes. You're not talking about the first half well, at all. Well, you can talk about how they responded to, 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 to Puerto Rico. Both teams went at each other in the first half. And, and, and also how we took on that challenge, let's say, from what you saw. Um, it, it, it's, it was hard to decipher what we were trying to do. Um other than to, as soon as anybody got the ball, is to find Levi. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you're looking at energy levels, you're looking at sort of the purpose, you're looking at runs off the ball. It didn't, none of it seemed to matter because at the end of the day, the goal was just to find Levi. Mm -hmm. Whether he was, dull, whether there were two men marking him or one. So, you know, you, you, you had Phillips and, and, and Poon and Highland, I think, working hard in the midfield. But, you know, it, it didn't seem like it had much, none of it seemed like any purpose to really move the team forward other than to find Levi at some point. Mm. So to, to look at, and I think for us, Puerto Rico kind of defended that way and we attacked that way mm -hmm. um, for the first half. Um, and I think that's why I thought nil all was a fair result at the beginning, even though I think they had some decent chances. I think, I think Frender up made a, a great save on a free cook. And a, and a free kick there, and uh, um, and he, he he commanded his box. I think if anything, he was the highlight for me at the foot in the first half. 
Right. Um, right. Oh, he played. You know, I just, you know, we, we, we weren't really doing much. But the, um, the, the, you know, the midfield was working. We had possession and there was sort of an ebb and flow. I, I, I think the first half may have ended maybe fairly equal in terms of possession. Okay. Um, even though, even though, uh, and I think we started stronger uh, in terms of holding on to the ball at the beginning mm-hmm. uh, of the half. I mean, I, I was very hopeful when we started the game. I thought we were going to play less direct. Okay. But um, it didn't turn out that way. And 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 the second half, you saw we saw some character there from uh, from, uh, from the Warriors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think the change in uh, was bringing on Maquette really, um, really. You know, I think the guy, the, the players themselves had a little, little more swagger because um, they felt, um, for one, we were going to have the ball more and they thought more was possible um, in terms of being creative and to be dynamic. So I, I felt that he really put some energy into the game and I think it helped the whole team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It helped the whole team. I I I personally think that um Market brings out the best in Punanjan and that they both like um they both like playing the short passes and looking for the return ball and that sort of thing, keeping possession. Um so I, I think every time he's introduced, I saw it in the in the brief part of the USA game when they were together. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. also in this game, he brings the best out of of, of um Punanjan there. Um, yeah, no, I, I agreed. You you spoke about um, Fender Up's first half save of the free kick, but fine. I t- to me the the save of the the header mm-hmm. was top draw, and nobody oh, yes, yes. nobody speaks about that. So mm-hmm. uh, my TV now as big as <laughs> some people would. So I know if I, if my view is skewed. Well, I, I guess we we, we, we ne- historically we're never that good in the air, other than you know Dennis scoring to get us to the World Cup. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess we, we're not paying attention to too many headers. We're looking at the <laughs> ball. <laughs> 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 that was, that, to your point, you're right. It, it was a good save. It was a very good save. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did did Puerto Rico? Uh, well, they didn't appear to panic when they went behind. It, it, it was just more of the same. Did our gameplay change from what you saw? Um, no, but the, the one thing I'll tell you, Puerto Rico, and you said the keyword, they did not panic. They were very convinced in what they were going to do. Mm-hmm. Very convinced and very confident with what they wanted to do and how they were going to play. There was no panic, no, uh, you know, intense argument with, with, amongst themselves. They really felt comfortable and knew what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think, um, I, I, I would have liked to see us going up one do a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I think we allowed them to be too comfortable with the ball. I think we had one or two chances after for, for, to go up two, um, but you know we, we didn't we didn't mature, we didn't capitalize on those. And then but, Joe um, got injured as well, and, had, and had to come yeah, up. yeah, Joven got injured, and I think not too long after. I'm not sure what minute um, Highland got injured, and I mean Highland was a, it was a huge part in both games. Because he is really the on-field coach. I mean, he's really orchestrating everything. So, I think losing him was a, a huge part of it, also. Yeah. Even though it was later, later on, yeah. later on in the game. Yeah. 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 Um, but um, and and when you try, when you have, if you have Highland on, and then you had Poon, and you're trying to with Mucket, when you're trying to push for a win, you kind of need Highland to keep them organized. Mm-hmm. You know, because he was doing such a good job of. I mean, his communication to me on the field is ex- is exceptional. Really exceptional. Uh, on on closing, tell us what you saw though as the the, the bright spots that, that that we could take from these two qualifiers. You know what what out there, um, you know could yeah, make us feel a little bit enthused about uh, what's to come. Um, well, Levi is scoring. Levi scored for us, which um, mm-hmm. um, I think um, well, it, you it, know, it's I, very I, rare, by the way, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's why you know Levi scored for us, and and I think that's a good sign, and and I think that show you know the fact that I think he's a focal point in the attack um, on the Fenwick. I think his confidence is good. I mean, I've seen him 
plays, uh, you know, in uh, before he was, before he went to Israel and before he's at AEK you now in, in Greece. Is, mm. I mean, he, he looked very confident. He was running at people with abandon. I mean, there's no time he picked up the ball. I didn't try to run at people, mm-hmm. which is um, uh, he had defenders backing up. I mean, even if it was, uh, and he, oftentimes he didn't have players to connect with the player one two. He was going on his own. Mm-hmm. So uh, to me, that's encouraging that he has that level of confidence in himself. Mm-hmm. You know, after leaving Holland and, and I think he was in Israel before. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's something positive. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I, I think friend, I think, I think friend up is is a is a good option for us, right. a goalkeeper. And I, I I read today that um, Philadelphia Union signed Ranjit Singh, so he'll he'll be back in the MLS. Yeah. So you, you know, if I don't know what if he'll be have the number one, we could have some nice competition at. For the for the goalie goalkeeper position, which is good, mm-hmm. um, and um, I think bringing I think Phillips is a good addition. I think Phillips played well. The the the, the North American Tip program identified him, so uh, let me plug. We identified him for for Derek King's team, and he, he was going to be an integral part of that team before the COVID. Um, yeah, so I think he's a good addition. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so and I think Poon Angaran who. You know, we weren't sure. He was another player we had in the pool for the U20s. Mm-hmm. That um, he was in Argentina. We didn't know what level football he was playing regularly. I think he he showed well for himself. So mm-hmm. if you can bring Molino into that mix, um, for me, what I think is that this. What I think has to solve is that, is that defense. Mm-hmm. I think we have a good pool of midfielders. You have players. You can still bring in players like um, G. JP, Jean Paul Rashford, you could still call, you still have guys like Akeem Garcia could play up front. So mm-hmm. I think we have a nice pool. I'm very encouraged. Depends on how the coach can, you know, do his thing and his technical stuff makes these guys together. The only thing that still worries me is against a good team. I don't think our defense is our goalkeeping is good, mm-hmm. but we we can't go with the same back four we've been going with the last those two those three games. I'll, I'll include Orlando. Yeah. You know, uh, I think I think um, Jones wasn't there because he was injured. Who was in Orlando, but he wasn't in these two games. He played right back. Or, no, he played in the midfield actually in Orlando. Yeah. But I think the, what the, my most concern is our back four at this time, mm-hmm. uh, okay. and figuring that out, which I think is going to force our style of play. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I'm certainly encouraged going to the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. And 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 Sean, of course, uh, I don't think Barney knows he's an Arsenal supporter. So uh, if he's encouraged about uh, why you have to bring that up? Why have to bring that up? Whoa, whoa. This, it this, was only three nil today. Whoa. Jesus Christ! This puts Jesus serious, Christ! This puts a serious spin on everything you said so if, far. If I ask that support, as encouraged, then yeah. there's something to be encouraged about. No, so. if I ask that support, they encouraged. I'm not. They, they got as much trust as what they're saying, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just be encouraged every game <laughs> with nothing to support. <laughs> we, we, no, no, we, I'm encouraged after a three nil loss to Liverpool, who couldn't score or be nobody. I'm still encouraged. <laughs> we, are, we appreciate the enthusiasm, I'm sure. <laughs> if nothing else, but why? Why before we wrap up, I just want to say, right? Since we're in this mood of um self promoted you know Lasana. why did it succeed oh gosh <laughs> and then you talking about tip i just like to let you know that um a guy named wayne shepherd suggested yes. um michelle punanger and to justin reed um you may know that guy um concerning yeah yes. for the, yeah a guy named wayne <laughs> shepherd suggested him for the u20 um for you all to look at take a look at him so. check check his spam folder sure <laughs> So, let so, me see. Look at the spam. So, look at the spam. So, I wanna, I wanna say hats off to Wayne Shepherd. <laughs> let me ask you: if, if there are any more friends of Wayne Shepherd who have more players, please send them away. <laughs> even if they're in Puerto Rico, that, even if they're in Puerto Rico. That, that Wayne Shepherd guy right now, I think he's working on some from Venezuela, right? <laughs> some players from Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. uh, Sean, um, great to have you here and to, to, to share your experience from, from that uh, adventure and more adventures to come. Yes, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thanks uh, a lot. And uh, um, all the best to Noah. I hope he recovers um, sufficiently from whatever injury he had um, and has a good season ahead of him. This is a real important year for him. For yes, very much so. Thank you. And national level. So.
Mm-hmm. Wishing them the best. Hey, very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, Sean. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. All the best. Okay, bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bean Shepard. <laughs> Michelle put on Sharon. Yeah. I mean. Mm-hmm. So, what, what, what do you think? Um, about Bane? Wayne Shepard and <laughs> Michelle put on Sharon. How to break this thing? I'll try to be gentle. Nobody cares about Wayne Shepard. Yeah, Bane. but Michelle put on Sharon. No, um, what I, you know, listening to Hayden Martin and listening to, to Sean Powder speak about, you know, the fo- Levi being the focal point. Mm-hmm. Um, we playing, Levi plays in a 4 2 3 1 for AEK Athens. He plays the same inverted forward, right? Mm. Um, we playing a 4 3 3 and we mm. using him inverted. Basically, the same thing, mm-hmm. right? The difference is, and at this level, when people realize, and any defender with his soul, that's the first thing you would, you would look at, any, any wing back. You look to see was the player you're coming up against was the strongest strongest foot. Even if it didn't get um we scout dossier. Yeah. 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 Why scout? We scout telling you these things. Um you would you would early in the piece you would know this. So when you are sending him on his weaker foot or sending him on on the stronger foot with support to block, the thing that is going to keep you honest and keep you guessing is if there's a wing back overlapping. Mm-hmm. Or if there's some, uh, or maybe even uh, an attacking midfielder coming on a short overlap on mm-hmm. the outside. We need to do something else to open up the possibilities for Levi. I have no problem with Levi playing inverted. Um, I was in a discussion on, um, on, a, on a, chat, a chat group recently. Mm-hmm. No, no why, big. Why no big, it again? No, no big chat group just you know people what? just talking <laughs> why did it exit again go on, go and, on. I, and i made mention of the fact that the structures that are in place or the structures that are not in place to support levi um yeah it's predictable he's coming inside but if you have somebody going on the outside of him somebody taking up that other lane if you cut the field into five vertical lanes mm. he's coming from lane five into four somebody has to be going from four into five to mm. allow that wing back and that covering center back to have something to think about. Mm-hmm. If you don't do that, then it's very one dimensional and it's going to be stopped. And building on that conversation too, even if it is we play him conventionally as a left side attacker mm-hmm. and we still don't have somebody underlapping that it is, that is if you picture that now as lanes one and two coming in lane two, mm-hmm. then you're still going to have the same problem. So we, we, we need to have the structures around to support what it is we're trying to do to give the opponent something to think about. All this lane one and with lane two, you are jockey in a past life, boy. So why are you going to say 100 meters <laughs> runner? <laughs> why are you going to say a sprinter? I had that kind of sprinter shape. You see me? I see a, I see a jockey across the table. For me. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You understand what he's saying. You I mean, understand a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you look at uh, at Robin, for instance, who who a lot of people would say, um, oh, he's, he's gonna cut in, cut in everybody on his left knew, foot. Everybody knew he was going. <laughs> everybody, on his left foot. yeah, 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 and and yet he was still able, able to be because, effective, yeah, because of the movement of, of um, that player outside. That'd be Philip Lam, I suppose, at, at, at times for for Munich going that, on his right kind of thing. Why you can call a Real Madrid player? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, his best days, of course, were, were at Bayern Munich, you know? Hey, everybody who plays for Real Madrid, <laughs> best days are at Real Madrid. Well, if you were to, like, uh, a, a good attacking combination, you have Marcus Rashford and Luke Shaw on the whoa, left. Whoa, 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 whoa. As you said, Rashford whoa, tucking in and Luke whoa. Shaw going on the outside. We're so. talking about people who win stuff, right? <laughs> let's, let, me, let, me, let me keep it real, right? So... Coach Martin made mention of Marcelo and Ronaldo. <laughs> That's a fantastic um, combination to describe exactly. Uh, you yeah. know? But but seriously though, the structures that need to support that could be your plan A. That could be your where you go into your, your sweet spot. But you have to this you have to give the opponent something else to think about. And I, I just think if we keep if all right, even if it is we decide to play 
uh, what I call laser fence football, where the back four reach to the, the halfway line. That, that's and, laser, laser fence. I like laser tag or, or you're going for laser fear. I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I went specifically for laser fence because <laughs> okay. that's something that they use for dogs to keep them in the yards <laughs> without walls, right? Beyond uh, you and the technology. <laughs> but anyhow, if we go in for that, where the back line gets to the, the halfway line and they do not advance any further, mm -hmm. All right, the wing back can go. Understand that. You want to be safe. You want to make sure you have numbers back. Fine. One of your attacking midfielders mm -hmm. could make that run outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could make that run outside. And if they make the run outside and the play breaks down, then Levi, you ask Levi to just drop inside and do take up their position on the defensive side until we could we could form back up. But something has to be done. We can't be one dimensional like that. Because mm, now we're trying, of course, not to be stretched mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I think two important things in this next group, this next round that matches. Um, well, one, I think we probably faced the most experienced coach in in terms of Dave Saturan at at, at Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think the Kitishan uh, coach, the, the uh, he's from a great football nation, Argentina, oh, but. Boy. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't have much of a CV behind him anyway. He has no CV. We looked it up. <laughs> we looked it up. What's his name? I want, I want everybody to go and look up this man's CV. This is, I don't understand. <laughs> his CV is his passport. He was born yeah. in Buenos Aires, a place of a, a, a football, capital of football. So hey, that's a CV right there. Passport. Great. So um, uh, maybe the football, football will be a little bit more open. Who, who knows than against, that, against that it was I don't know I don't when know it, what we, we or you mean open in that they may not be set up defensively as, yeah as, as, as tight, structured and as, as, as yeah probably so and the other the, the other X factor here is, is Kevin Molino and his, his bag of goals if he hopefully brings it when he comes and how, how they fit Molino into the system is going to be very very important too listener I think we have enough going forward with a uh, fit Molino joining the, the squad mm -hmm. to get past and Vince. Um, Saint Kitts and Nevis. Saint Kitts. Um, however, there's the X factor that you have to add to it. Saint Kitts, despite the, the coach not being um, as, you know, as storied <laughs> <laughs> as, as some other coaches, mm -hmm. the fact is he is a man coming from a footballing nation, mm -hmm. telling these players probably things that they have not heard. Definitely, they haven't heard it like how he has said it. Yeah, yeah. Right? And the son's motivational mm -hmm. speeches are quite good. And they have won. Mm -hmm. And when you win, winning, winning brings a feeling of invincibility. Mm -hmm. Winning makes you go that extra mile. What we have to be prepared to do, quality-wise, I am almost sure we outstrip them. Mm -hmm. What we have to be prepared for in that game is to fight. Mm -hmm. We have to. So I'm hoping, and it, it falls nicely for us, that game didn't fall in this window where mm -hmm. we are not at 100% fitness. Seasons would have started. The MLS season would have started. Players would have gotten into a better rhythm. Seasons would have been ending as well. Yeah. And we have um, like those guys in Europe or that guy in Europe. We only have one um, guy in Europe. That that is true. Um, we have Bato. Bato. We have Levi Garcia as well. Yeah. Right. They may be able. Daniel Phillips. So we have they, a couple of guys. Possibly some. Maybe some more coming so from Britain. Act, so actually, I'm going to correct myself. They should be able to come home, and join up with the squad, and train. Mm. So we should be we should be peaking. We should be hitting top gear there. Mm -hmm. um, at that time so that falls nicely for us this game that game could have been very tricky if it fell in this first window for us mm. where okay. it falls now I think it will work out good for us Coach Fenwick would have had more time with, with, with more actual time with the players to formulate a better plan yeah. we would have had the use of the Y Scout We Scout I don't yeah. know is the correct pronunciation mm -hmm. I say Y Scout Mm. It's potato, potato for me. And, and it's true that this season in, in, in England, for certain, it ends in uh, early May. 
So we, we, we should be able to get those I, guys. I was confident that I was right, yes, Lasana, yeah, because yeah, my team... stumble across no, something my, there. My, my team is in the, normally in the business end of the season. <laughs> we, we're still around. So, so I stumble across something there. No, 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 I didn't stumble. <laughs> I walked confidently. <laughs> yeah, so Trinidad should be in a good place, and we're going to get past that. Mm-hmm. We need to put on our scoring boots because yeah. we can't afford to draw. But to be fair, I don't think that someone who trusts the delivery of their message spends the whole 90 minutes on the field shouting in, in instructions from the touchline. There's, there's two ways to look at it. I, I could talk from my own personal experience. I used to stand up at the, st- at the side of the field and shout for 90 minutes. Mm. All right? Um, in the last year or two, I don't do that. Because I've come to understand... COVID-19, no football? Yeah, idiot. But <laughs> in the last year or two, last footballing year or two, God, I didn't think I had to explain this, but the St. Mary's you went to, so I'll break it down to small pieces for you. If, yeah. Yeah, they started to feel shouted now like I got a case, but... <laughs> for, for real, eh? But um, yeah, and, and my reason for that was... I thought the players didn't understand. Mm. Yeah, well, the players didn't understand fully because your delivery, my delivery wasn't what it's supposed to be. Mm. Right? I understood. They look like they understood when we're doing it in practice. But then at the game now, your nerves and then you're seeing things. And But as you get comfortable with what you're doing, you're, you no longer do that. There are some other coaches who just hyped, mm-hmm. who have to be, they, they, the players Nervous doing energy. The, yeah, the players doing the right things and everything, but they just have to be there. You know, they kicking, they, they kicking the ball, the shadow, kicking everything. One of those two camps, Coach Fenwick will fall in. Yeah, I goes. know where I fell and I know what I needed to adjust. Mm-hmm. So I when I when when I am coaching now and I say something, I get up to say something, it is something that um that really requires that that injection of information because to me if i kept talking all the time i know players will go all right now sheppy and we sign you off mm-hmm. yeah. right so been there been there <laughs> i didn't want to say done that but <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i don't know which camp he falls in but <clears throat> you have to be you so if 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 it is in the camp where it's nervous energy and everything then nobody can fault him for that if it's in the other camp that I was in, right? That was Camp Sheppy. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you need you need to adjust that. You need to work on that, and you need to adjust that, and 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 you you adjust that by adjusting your delivery. Okay. Um. So we hope that we are delivering uh, this this podcast to you now on on Wednesday. We looked the far again, but hopefully, listen, hopefully no hiccups. Listen to me. Eh? I just hope Lasana don't press the wrong button again <laughs> <laughs> and erase everything. So, uh, listeners, uh, good to be back. I uh, hope you all enjoy having us back. Uh, this is Birdie. There's, there's your cue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think of me. This is Barney. <laughs> and we out. Bam. No, well, I'm here in the drink. It takes long to get that first ring now. You never, I gotta... you never, you never call nobody. <laughs> I got to now. It's long. I'm fine. How are you good? You good? Good, good. How are you? Right. I'm good. This man like. <laughs> 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 of course. Of course. <laughs> it's kind of unparlament, unparliamentary language you call that. It has, it has nothing to do with anything yeah. pushing back. Other than the man never on time for anything. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. I move on motion. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I work in with, boy. This is ridiculous. A professional like me having to come down to this level. <laughs> Let me introduce the man. Now. Let me introduce the man. Now. Where my agent? <laughs> Let me introduce the man. Now. Go All ahead. right. Good. Mine? Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. Deep. Uh, Hear my voice only, boy. Deep like Barry White. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 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 let your hair down. <laughs> and I'm going to be one of those teams, though, that um, has its mascots in the starting 11. <laughs> Nigel Hasselbank, he looks like a big dumpling. Wait, wait. <laughs> I don't want to body shame, yeah, hey, Barney, but. No.
couple of root legs. Hey. <laughs> I think that one was good. <laughs> Bad ninja in the dad. Yo. Yeah. Check, check. One, two, three, four. God damn it. Oh, hey. Bad boy. You know how we crazy. <laughs> On the radio, tell me what you hear. You hear me? So, 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 so,